Namaste. Welcome to Nepal's Top 7 Debaters 2014, produced by Leadership Academy. This is the first competition round in the category 4 of grade 10, 11 and 12 English language. And the topic for today's competition is Human and drug traffickers should be entitled to death sentence. Let me introduce our panel of judges for today's competition round. Our first judge is Mr. Santosh Shah. He is the president of today's Youth Asia. Our second judge is Ms. Vishaka Shrestha. She is the manager corporate at Radishan Hotel Kathmandu and a Swiss hospitality graduate. Our third judge is Mr. Blair Glenn Kors. He is the executive director of the Accountability Lab in Nepal. The participants have been divided evenly to speak for and against the motion. According to International Labour Organization, 200,000 Nepali women have already been trafficked to India and still 300,000 of the Nepalese people are working on documented as forced labour in the Gulf countries. According to Narconan, 150,000 Nepalese youth are being involved in drug abuse. These drug traffickers and human traffickers have made the life of millions and thousands of people risk that snatched the basic fundamental freedom, rights and pursuit of happiness of those people. Now, these inhuman activities deserve no less punishment than that sentence. Um, our government has not remained silent about it. It has done several things. It has separated the problems like slavery convention, forced labor convention. There is also provision for 5 to 20 years imprisonment for those who are involved in trafficking, but still this trafficking is increasing at alarming rate. There has been no improvement. Now, please don't take me wrong, but the reality is that our system can be changed by money and power. It has been seen. The system where Yunus Ansari had to six bullets inside central jail and the one Charles Sobras was entitled life imprisonment is still involved in such crime. How can we believe such system? So the uh, Narconan head Bosanto Kumar says that drug dealers are well organized in government. The similar case works with the these human traffickers also and you know catching a very few of them is really hard and when you are catching them after some time they escape the canopy of the jail and they are back to the business. There is no significant achievement of those things. But if they are entitled life sentence, then the first thing is that those traffickers can be decreased in one place and in the next place the it spreads of fear in the other traffickers, you know, and the, it is the most extreme fear, the fear of death, can change them, can transform them and save millions of traffickers from being involved in the wrong path. Our sisters are dying, our sisters are starving in Indian brothers, our brothers are dying of thirst in Arabian deserts, our youth are misleading their way, misusing their energy and power that could be used in some productive work. So we cannot stick quiet. By sacrificing one life, we must be ready to save millions of lives. Thank you. The fact that I agree is that human trafficking and drug abuse, they are heinous crimes. The part that I don't agree is when you talk about death penalty. Well, first of all, think about whom are you punishing? You're punishing the criminals or his family. You're not punishing the criminals when you kill him. When you kill him, he's getting out of his punishment. He's not having, getting to serve time. He just gets out of the punishment. The one who suffers is his family. Their family loses a beloved one, so their family loses a person who, upon whom they are dependent on. So the punishment should not be given to the family who are actually innocent, but to the criminal who are convicted of a crime, heinous as drug trafficking and human trafficking. Second thing that I would like to point out is what if the criminals who have been uh, given death penalty, they are innocent and minded. It has been happened and in the United States, 36 innocent people have been given death penalty. No, it cannot be reversed. So you cannot give death penalty to innocent people. And this fact is as of Dr. Ken Hoss, who's worked as a death penalty prosecutor for 19 years in the United States. Another fact, an eye for an eye makes this world blind. You kill a person for destroying another person's life to convince the world that killing is bad. This does not make sense from any rational angles that I see. It is just nonsense that I would point out. You cannot kill a person because he has killed another person. 
you are also a part of this injustice and it is not absolutely justice what they have to be given is serve time and they have to be given the time to repent they have ha there has to be a chance for redemption there has to be a chance for salvation there has to be a second chance that is the most important thing thing that a person should get and as of the human right universal declaration of human rights the third article itself states that every individual in this entire world has a right to live so you cannot seize this right to live of every individual human being thank you according to a data published by american himalayan foundation annually 20000 nepalese girls are sold to brothels in other countries uh, some are even at a tender age of nine and within two years of their working they become HIV positive and within 20 years of their living they die similarly according to a data published by uh, published uh, by uh, published on uh, drug hard drug users in our country in the year 2010 AD 46,000 hard drug users were found in our country uh, in which 70% of them were of, a, of age from age group between 15 to 29 and 19% uh, of them were of, uh, were introduced to drugs when they were less than 15 years old now can we consider those traffickers and human and uh, human traffickers as human beings i really don't think so they put other childhoods in danger they put other people's lives in danger and ultimately they kill people um i have seen a woman in court where she is uh, it's, a, it's a statue of course uh, she has a balance in her hand and the balance is always in equilibrium that equilibrium tries to mention a fact that the punishment should fit the crime and no punishment is better uh, for human trafficking and drug trafficking than death penalty my opponent friend talked something about human rights yes I agree human rights uh, they say that every human has a right to live but does it also say that humans are allowed to uh, traffic drugs are they allowed are they allowed to sell human beings to other countries they are not human beings I consider them psychopaths they're not logical human beings are supposed to be rational in the end what I like to say is that death penalty is the ultimate warning to all those would-be criminals so death penalty should be given to human and drug traffickers first of all i see so many figures being branded about here 200,000 people who have been trafficked away from nepal now imagine every 200,000, every 10 people are trafficked by a single person now we start killing those people what would happen to the population of this country if we start killing 200,000 or 20,000 people Imagine the economic costs that it would take. It is simply not believable. It is simply not possible. And how, why should we not kill people? First of all, there is the talk of human rights. You see, in 1997, Nepal uh, ratified an international convention of civil and political rights. And by doing that, what Nepal effectively did was it illegalized uh, killing people. It illegalized giving death penalties. And why did we illegalize giving death penalties? Because we believe that every single person has an equal right to live. We believe that it doesn't matter if you're the prime minister or the magistrate. It doesn't matter if you're a farmer or a doctor. You deserve to live. And that is why we cannot kill people. They have a certain uh, right to live. The, another, another thing is Currently, in the laws of Nepal, the maximum crime, the maximum punishment anyone can be given is 20 years in prison. Now, see, a murderer is given 20 years in prison and a drug trafficker is killed? Is that even logical? It's not, right? So, uh, you have to look at the current state of our country, you have to look at uh, the international scenario, and you have to conclude that no, killing people is not right, no. Killing people for any reason is not right and especially for an offence such as drug trafficking and human trafficking, although they must be condoned, is not right. Thank you. Let me talk about a snowball effect that's going around here. Um, from the top of the mountains of fully covered snow, if we throw a small snowball and, and it's rolled down and until the slope, slope ends, uh, it comes into an avalanche, a huge amount. 
talking about uh, drug, tra drug trafficking and uh, human trafficking in context of Nepal, one human trafficker would obviously gain lots of uh, attention towards other people who want to train, who want to come to the uh, to, to that train of uh, transporting human uh, from one place to another illegally. And similarly, in the drug cases. Uh, one drug dealer will uh, try to open the channel uh, via through lots of people and uh, like this a lot of channel opens where they can do their illegal activities on uh, about the uh, drug offenses done uh, in nepal nepal is currently by the un survey of crime tens and a criminal justice system in 2002 it is recorded that about 201 uh, one person 201 person per 200000 people are involved in illegal transport of narcotic drugs throughout the nepal this is like ranking of 48th place uh, according to the national survey international survey by the even uh, giving the talking talking about death sentence if this trend continues uh, going from the next 10 years or 20 years, then uh, I think that there will be lots of uh, criminal activities going around. Just to make an impact, I think there should be death sentence uh, implied in Nepal. That's all. Right from our childhood, we've considered it to be our legitimate right to play the blame game with our government. And hey, we're natural athletes at that, aren't we? But finally, when our government of 1990 decided and deemed upon abolishing the death penalty, here we are trying to promote protracted legal killing, almost a murder, as a solution for a difficult problem. No, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be soft on crime and neither am I trying to say or neither am I trying to defy that any form of trafficking is indeed a staggering burden to an econo already economically and socially taxed society. All that I'm saying is I find it highly ironic and typically caustic of my very worthy opponents trying to reinforce that all traffickers are great offenders of the state law and yet suggest that a few minutes of choking and a few minutes of final termination to death is actually going to equate or is going to be an equivalent and a strong enough punishment to a girl, a 16 year girl who probably went through so much of uh, you know misery and who probably was bought, sold, used and reused, like literally like a toy. We know that 32% of the commercially um, trafficked humans in Nepal, especially women, are voluntary servitudes. So why don't we eradicate that poverty which causes a malady in human to be able to sell himself? We can talk about violation of state laws, then why can't we talk about the violation of human rights? Why can't we talk about capital punishment as a violation to the right to life? Now, what I mean to say is that I'm a Nepali, I am a Gorkha and I am a proud Nepali and I would never ever suggest anybody to duck and uh, to escape the situation and send someone to death just because uh, it's barbaric, it's cowardice. Why don't we think of life sentence without power, a good 15 years of life behind the bars where the criminal has to think that okay for the next 15 years I have the chance to make myself a human again. Making candles and carpets for the country for example and finally realizing that there are ways to make money, ways to pour sweat and make money. All that I want to say that everybody has a right to live and we have no right to take anybody's life. And life, uh, and, I'm, uh, and I just want to really, really reinforce that life sentence, uh, uh, sorry, life and sentence is a better option than death sentence because we do not have the right to kill anybody. In fact, I have full faith in my country and I think that we as a nation are competent enough to rehabilitate, to rehabilitate those people and to convert a, a, you know, a liability into an asset. We need to be stronger than what we are, we need to be more practical than what we are, than what we think in our weakest of our moments. A tooth for a tooth, an eye for, a, an, eye for an eye, you kill my son, uh, you kill my son so I kill yours, no. We just need to be stronger than what we are and what we can be. The, uh, like in our weakest moments. Thank you. We will continue with the first competition round of Nepal's top seven debaters 2014 after a short break. Welcome back. You're watching Nepal's top seven debaters 2014 and we are featuring the first competition round in the grade 10, 11 and 12 English language category. Today, when I look around my country, I feel that humanity is lost somewhere in between power and money somewhere where the no 
somewhere where no laws can uh, defy what is good and what is wrong. Today, the uh, father sells his daughter in for, for money, and the excuse is that I am uh, I am in poverty, and uh, husband sells his wife because he says that I cannot bear her burden, and then because of this, the, the whole existence of those victims is shaken. They have no faith in humanity, and what they could do for the nation is all lost in vain. What we do not realize is that our country is corrupted. There is uh, all the peoples, all those vermin who uh, have no respect to humanity are connected to those corrupted politics. Uh, sorry, corrupted politicians, and they have the mafia link to do anything in their will to uh, for money and power. To we may say that we have seen in a lot of uh, cases that um, a very um, uh, a mafia, let's say, has escaped in two days, where uh, escaped from the, uh, prison in two days, where he was sentenced to life sentence, uh, life uh, imprisonment. So, isn't this a high time when we think about it? If we it cannot control these people who are being rather a burden to the uh, society rather than uh, doing something useful. They are slowly killing all those people. They are taking away their lives, their uh, emotions, their social life. And without a social life, a human being is nothing. Because human beings need a social life to prosper. And if a person does not have a social life, then he... The rationality of the human being is lost. So, I would like to say that before our country gets even worse and leads on the path to its own devastation, we have to exterminate those vermin. Thank you. Death penalty saving more innocent lives. Every year, twin, every year, five to seven thousand Nepali women and children are trafficked into forced, forced prostitution. Thousands of Nepalese women and children, those who are trafficked, are below the age of 16. BBC reports state that Nepal has a population of 3 crore 5 lakh, out of which 1 lakh 50 thousand are drug addicts, and 70% of them are criminals. Now, for example, India. It is the largest democratic state and still observes capital punishment in offences like murder, terrorism, and betraying of the state. So why can't we in Nepal do justice to millions by observing the same punishment for such wild savage beasts with whom we can have no society nor security? They not only make the victims life more miserable than death, but also spread terrorism among citizens and betray the state. I believe capital punishment to an extent can also reduce the expenses as keeping criminals like Kassab in jail even for a year costed rupees 50 crore to the Indian government. Small punishments will not deter the number of traffickers. Winston Soto III said, if we look at the dictionary, that also means to inhibit. When we remove such criminals from face of the earth, we're actually inhibiting them from doing it again. It took 10 years for drug trafficking to resurface in the Philippines after Marcos administration sentenced Lim San by firing squad. A country like China, having largest population, and geographical area observes a crime rate of only 1% owing to capital punishment setting right examples. I conclude by saying that if a man is a danger to the society, is threatening it, then his execution for the preservation and healing of the common good is to be commended, for there is no parallel between death and even the most miserable life. Thank you. May I request the judges for their comments. For the grade 10, 11 and 12, I would think uh, you can do much better than today. In 2012 and 2013, uh, this category has been the most competitive among all the six uh, categories we have. So I would say that uh, most of you could not convince us either way, whether we should give a death penalty to the traffickers of humans and drugs or whether we should not. And even the data has varied from one person to another. So, uh, you know, the data has to be correct when you debate. You can't just throw any figure. Some of you have mugged up your uh, debate. That should never happen in a debate competition. You can have your notes and data just to support your, not to guide you. Counter argument was almost none. 
so you know you have all in a debate you always have to listen to what your opponents have to say and if you're the first one you have to pre-calculate what counter arguments would be coming up and that's how you become a smart smart debater asking questions some of you did that in english debate you don't ask questions in nepali debate it makes an impact but we're not here to answer your questions <laughs> we're here to judge you and we can't judge you if you start asking us questions right so also for one or two of the debaters uh, use a gender balanced language like he his is not enough no you have to use he or she you know you have to bring the both the genders in, into the context so some of you uh, who are going to make it to the next round uh, please work hard and maintain the standard of this category you guys uh, actually presented a lot of enthusiasm there were certain um, good reasoning and evidences that were portrayed um, but in some you know when you source the uh, when you have a certain source the sources were not quoted so it would be really nice to know where you actually got the information or data from and it's more Im informative and in some um, i think it was not that convincing i sort of um, had you sort of engaged me in the beginning but then uh, the enthusiasm and the engagement sort of fluttered in the end the confidence i would say was not that great uh, some of you portrayed a lot of confidence but uh, in some i could not see that and uh, second of all the points of information put forward by uh, most of the debate participants um, it was so so it was not that convincing um well thank you very much thank you to all of you i i thought uh contrary to what the other judges said you all did really really well um there are areas where there could be some improvement which i'll talk about but i thought you were brilliant it's very hard to get up there and and talk in front of the cameras uh, to judges that you, you don't know. So I thought you were fantastic. So keep up the good work. Uh, you all did a lot of research. Clearly, you prepared. You were well spoken. Um, you made logical arguments in most cases. So well done. I think the, the group that were arguing against the motion had the easier task, actually, because it's harder to, um, to argue for the death penalty when you're protecting human rights, when that is in itself, I think, a, clearly a, a breach of human uh, rights. But the, uh, the group that argued for did, did extremely well. There were a few areas where I thought um, I could have learned more from you. Uh, one was the economics of all of this. Of course, there is a justice um, component to this and a human rights component. But, but economically, if you look at the countries that do have the, the death penalty, like the US, it's hugely expensive. Uh, actually, it's much more expensive because most of these people stay on death row for their entire lives anyway than it is to have some kind of, res kind of restorative process of justice. So you could have touched on the economics of it. Um, also, the capacity of the legal system to deal with this. You, some of you brought up this idea that, that people could be executed by mistake, um, that they perhaps weren't guilty. Does the legal system in Nepal, for example, does it have the capacity to deal with these cases effectively? Um, you also tended, most of you, to focus on Nepal, but the question was actually much broader than that. And it would have been good to, to th look at some other countries. I think it was Tanvi mentioned the Philippines, which was good. You know, I would have liked to have heard some stuff from elsewhere. A few points very quickly on techniques. I think you should make sure you use all the time you have. There are a couple of you that, that didn't quite do that. You should definitely speak slowly. Um, mostly you were quite good at that, but it's always worth reiterating. Um, use your hands and eye contact with us in order to emphasize your points. I thought uh, Shrijan was, was very good at that. Um, statistics, again, I would say make sure you quote what source they're coming from. Otherwise, it, it seems like you're picking them out of thin air. Yogesh was good at that. Tanvi was, was good at that as well. Make emotional appeals to us. I think facts are good, but emotional appeals convince people better. Uh, Ruchit, you were, you were good at that. And uh, keep the language logical and formal. Don't ever drop into sort of slang, which a couple of you did at, at one point. But overall, fantastic. Well done. And, uh, and keep up the good work. I request our judge, Mr. Santo Sa, to announce the result. We're not going to rank you today because it's just eight of you and we'll have to let two of you go today. I'll announce the name of two of you and I will wish you best wishes for your life and for your future debating, right? And the rest six of you who are going to do the next round, all the best. And please work harder than, than you are doing right now. Yogesh and Dasan, we'll have to let you go from today's competition. Uh, Yogesh and Dasan, please come forward. And rest of you, um, best wishes for the future ones. If you are a student studying between grade 7 and bachelor's level, you can apply for Nepal's Top 7 Young Poets 2014. Application submissions are open now. We invite you to participate in the alternative education programs run by Leadership Academy. 
you can call our office at 425-7250 or 980-203-2195 or email us at youthtya at gmail.com. We will be back next week. Namaste. Namaste.